up and what angle and stuff. Practice strike. Wasting up. <laughs> Practice spare. Very dry over there. Stephen Dignam, ACST, C Division. Watch out. Oh, look at this. We got the bowlers in the picture like they meant to do it. We got uh, Mike Fabrizio Smith versus Matt DePiro today. Potential playoff preview the current number one seed versus the current number six seed. It should be exciting. Matt DePiro's first ever time to South Yarmouth. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. Matt DePiro starting it off on lane one. Couldn't get him couldn't in the really, Couldn't, they weren't popping up on the blue team. I think on the third. As usual. Always open to feedback on the broadcast here. All right, DePiro throws it down. It's worth the head bin. Leaves the I'll go do a seven, quality eight, eight, check six. behind the scenes. No, no, seven, four, six. Got a piece of wood? Don't know if it'll help. Way to start out at your new house for the first time, huh? Oh, oh might get a break. Might get, get it. Oh, it wanted to. Wow. wow. <laughs> no luck. Left with the four pin. And. Oh, the hell? He got it. <laughs> for a 10 box. All right, as we know, perfect series still intact. Shales out of the split. Box number one. And Mike Fabrizio Smith, who's also an employee here, will retrieve the ball. You beat me to it, Steve. <laughs> I was just going to point out that Matt's opponent also happens to be an employee, which makes pin and ball retrieval much easier. <laughs> but he might get a couple more, and he's left with the half Worcester. Lots of half Worcester. <laughs> the one shot you can never throw when you want to. He does have some help in there, though. If he catches the object, he's got a little bit of a range here. And, oh, he gets the back bend, but not the front bend. Yep, just a hair off the object. And nine box. There goes the perfect game. <laughs> Noticing Steve, uh, Steve and I who are house bowlers here. I'm noticing watching uh, Matt Speed here. It's very comparable to my own. All right, and it's faster than mine. <laughs> All right, Matt with another ball right on the head pin again. Just leaves the ten pin. I don't love the house radar guns. As, you, know, you throw the same speed at you know everywhere you go, but one place will have you plus three or four or five miles an hour, but. They're all at the same place. Okay? Right on it for the spare. Nice job by Matt getting that first mark out of the way in a new house. Especially after three for three on the head pin. Yep. Finally, he's got a spare leaf off one of his head pins. Right. Here comes Phil. On the head pin again. Oh. Yeah, let's see if he gets another one. Nice. Sleeps the six pin with a nice plank of wood. 
Guy's 46 head pins away from making them all today. And all over it. Great shot. This is exactly how you want to start in a house you've never been to before. Right in the pocket, every ball. Well, two spares in a row, all right out of the gate. Putting some pressure on the number one seed in his own home out. Fill ball coming up. On the head pin again. And a strike. What a fill. Nice shot. Uh, nice start, Matt. Garment doesn't seem so far away anymore, does it? <laughs> All right. Matt coming out here all the way from Rhode Island today, an hour and 45 minute commute. Uh, yeah, slide we'll camera probably slide over. So, close your eyes, everybody, so you yep. don't get seasick. <laughs> I'm actually going to slide over, too, because I can't see unless I move. All right. Like, it's that pin. The right wing. The four pin. Oh, nice effort. That's the two pin. Smith pulling out of his home alley in Yarmouth, the defending Southern Conference champ in the C class, losing the finals to uh, Jeff Little, I believe it was. Sorry if I got that wrong person, but anyway, Mike only lost that match by one pin last year. Mike, right on the head pin. And break there, leaves the three. Sorry, Steve, but as you can see by Mike's record this year, he is definitely on a vengeance tour. He definitely is hungry coming off that one pin loss in the final last year. And all over it from spare. All right, the C division coming out firing here. Both of these bowlers showing why they're currently sitting in playoff spots. All right, here comes the bill. Right on the head, then. All right, let's break. Five want, nine. I just want the viewers to know I am surrounded by hot, two hot ACST prospects right now. And Bobby Eldridge and Stephen Dignam. Watch out, ACST. This thing <laughs> is only potentially growing. That wasn't a commitment. Just oh, a, uh, oh, I guess the five, but misses the nine. Just a friendly suggestion. <laughs> but it gets the nine. Fabrizio Smith only one pin behind through three frames here. However, DePiro has two, a 20 box and a strike set up there on the fourth and fifth. On the head pin. Can I get a break here? It's a 3-5. who does a lot of work on these lanes as an employee here to keep them nice and hopping did not have his efforts pay off on that ball and ends up with a nine box steve i don't know what happened there <laughs> nor I do i could not tell i was thinking maybe the cap got in the way but that pin didn't move no. the, the wood in the middle there maybe there was another cap behind it i didn't see or something Mike would love to come back and sit on a mark here. Uh, on the head again. He's all over it. Right. It's like he has the 2-5. Piece of wood. He's going to kind of wait and assess where it's going. Uh, I don't uh, like where that's stopping. Yeah. That it's is. amazing how so many times the wood seems to stop exactly where you don't want it to. That seems to be the case here. There is a shot, I think, but he really needs to get up on that cap and drive it straight back. Yep. But it's going to be a very pinpoint shot here to make this. Yeah. Oh, he got oh, it. What a oh, shot. Tremendous oh. shot. Nice shot from Mike. 
Nice start by both bowlers here. Yeah. Number 16, Matt DePiro, back up to see if he can continue his odd start. Currently up there, he's sitting on three marks in a row, 68 plus two balls. And on the strike, he first time misses the head bench, but he's left with a four horseman on the left. Oh. Uh, I think, oh, he's on a strike, it doesn't matter. He's on a strike, yeah. No, it's a strike, it's a strike. It's on a strike. And, oh, so this is to the right. It, See if it gives him that extra pin. Hey, Mike, hey, will Mike, you Mike? give him a six fill? Yep. Yep, yeah. gonna fix the fill. Scoring, Whoops. Steve. It's no match for the human eye. All us humans clearly could see that was six, but the computer could not. And it had two balls to do it. And yeah. it's second ball go. to make up for it, and still couldn't do it. So, check mark for the human eye on this box. Yeah. All right, eight box. Good out of that. Left that's one seven. That's what you want to do there, Steve. Uh, you you, you got to fix it again. He only got seven. Eight. Yep. <laughs> That's what you want to do there. You want to forget about the head pin on that third ball and just go for the count. DePiro throwing that ball exactly where you want, the third ball there. All right, now we have the box correct. <laughs> All right, that throw another ball. And on the three pin again. Yeah, after his 5 for 5 head pins first half, he's 0 for 2 here on one 2 so far. And, oh, just chops out the head pin. something on every ball, still sitting at, what is he, at 90 through 7, so as Bob Lee would say, he's 20 over par currently. All right. And looks like he's going to be back on the head oh, pin, and that's a strike. Hammer time. That DePiro with his second strike, the first time in Yarmouth, three boxes. First time back on the head pin in half two, and he gets rewarded.
Small sample size. True, true, <laughs> but that's, you know, I'd rather start with that than, uh, than an 80 guy. Oh, I think we, I think we might be okay. Yeah, maybe just a few inches here. All right, Mike Fabrizio Smith going to lane one now. Drops eight with ball one. And just to the left, only gets the seven. Hill to climb here, but as we know in ACST, even if he can't win the game, he'd like to get as many pins towards total in these last four boxes as he can. That was quite a break for hitting the 4-7 oh, yeah. pocket. <laughs> a lot of protection on that back yeah. pin there, so as long as he hits the head pin here, he should be okay. So for those of you new to the format, uh, these bowlers are bowling five strings. It's like a league where each game is worth two points in the standings. The difference, Mike, you're going to have to clear one there. Um, the difference is um, whoever wins total pinfall gets a bonus four points. So there are 14 points available today. Two points to the winner of each string and a bonus of four points to the winner. So in this format, it is possible to win two out of the five games, but if you win total pinfall, you still win the match eight points to six. So many possibilities here in the ACST. Those of you who watched the Daily and um, Waters match this morning, what a nice warm-up to this one today, huh? If you didn't catch that, definitely go back and take a look later on many little the left there and gets the two and leaves the four horsemen on the right. On our many candle pin streaming platforms. Just gets the 6-10, leaving the 1-3. Mm -hmm. Taking a quick look up at the uh, box, the line score here. Matt only had one ball in that first string where he didn't strike any pins. He got at least one pin on every single ball except for his last ball in the second box. Another great attribute when trying to win Candlepin bowling matches. Mike, ooh, just knocks out the 4 8. Mike seeming to uh, lose, his, lose his target here a little, but as we can know, he'll. We'll get it back at some point. Oh, just to the right of the head pin. Looked like it drifted a little right at the end. Good productive ball, though. All right. And gets the 10. Nice, what a nice shot. Nice Get the 127. Mike's sitting at 102 through nine boxes, so um, on pace to beat his 108 ACST league average, but uh, he has already lost game one here. He has a triple strike and he loses the game by seven. However, that would help for total. Right on the head, but there's oh, one strike. There's one. <laughs> okay, so like we talked about, these pins can be big right here when it comes to total pinfall. Mike has already lost string one, but whatever he does in this frame can easily have a lot to say about total pinfall four games from now. First ball to fill it coming up. And oh, oh, almost gets two back door. <laughs> Tries to come through the back door for two, but not this time. The head pin says not tonight. And there you go. Gets the 10 fill. Nice 20 box for Mike towards the fifth ball. 122 for Mike in game one. What a start by these two bowlers today. Matt DePiro, 139. Mike Fabrizio Smith, 122. This is just the first game, folks. You picked a good one to tune into today. We're trying a new scoreboard here. We're at the old fashioned look, pencil and paper. <laughs> so 
So Matt DiPiro first on the board with two points. Showing the number one seed, Mike Fabrizio Smith, that he means business too. All right, Matt first up for game two. Right back on the head pin. Five, four, seven. I know somebody who hates this leave. <laughs> I think many of us do, Steve, but yeah, I know the person you're talking about. Yeah, he really doesn't like this one. Uh oh, gets the five. I actually saw that leave go up in Millis a couple weeks ago twice with that plank in front of the 4-7 where you never expect it to go. And once in a while it does. Right, that's a foul. Eight box for Matt out of the gate. We have a frame enough on this side. What's that? Maybe okay. the way he holds. Oh, sorry guys. Sorry viewers. My bad. I should have warned you for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Oh, back on the head pin again. And hey, it's oh. good. It keeps us all like standing up and blood uh, circulating, you know? Kind of leaves a picket fence on the right. I stopped paying attention to that. That's all right. I apologize to the viewers. I promise that won't happen again. I'll well, at least warn you. Thinking of playing the wood here. You know, I don't think the angle is. Uh, got the three. Yeah, he would have yeah, really, really had to bury it almost in the gutter and get down by the red line to even give it a chance, I think. Probably the, the smart play there. All over the five for the ten box. Now it looks even better that he grinded it out for a ten. <laughs> But we'll never know, Pete. Right. You know, that's, you know, I, as, as a gambler, I might have definitely tried that, but, you know, that's those are the type of boxes that can easily turn into a seven, you know, where he showed us that with some patience, he could just grind it up for a ten. Oh, back on the head pin again, just leaves the eight. but I think many of us get in our own heads at times and just don't throw the same ball we always throw. I know I, for one, am guilty of this often. Me too. I overthink it when I have a single pin. Days I don't, much better days. <laughs> she just misses to the right, but gets a break. A nice break there. Outside. Gets the 10. 37 through 4 for Matt, so, you know, not the start he was hoping for coming off game one, but also not bad. He's one mark away from being over the 100 pace. Matt's hobbies are include but are not limited to canopy and bowling. Very astute observation, Pete. Thank you. <laughs> Hits the 4-7 pocket, but does not get the break that Mike got earlier. On the head pin, no good effort, but leaves the 9-6-10 on the right. Good attempt at that one. As much as we don't like that leave after the first ball, that shot does go alive with a good second ball. Just misses to the left. Knocks out the nine. It's an eight box. 45 through half one for Matt. So 17 pin lead for game one and 45 through half one of game two. And we are going to move the camera. So close your eyes in three, two, one. Welcome to a new perspective. <laughs> you may open your eyes. <laughs> Mike, right on the head pin with his first ball. Leaves the three six four. Are you looking? Is that a good spot? Uh, I was watching the action, Pete, but I will watch this time. The good news is you can see the action there too. <laughs> yes, I I realize that now. Thank you. Yes. Oh, nice oh, attempt. Nice pitch by Mike. Yes, we can see at this angle. And 
just misses to the left of the four pin for a nine box. Mike does have a one pin lead for one completed frame. Knocks out the 189. You know, Steve, I always say though, it's actually this shot's easier than a spread eagle because of that five pin. If you can slice either the the uh, the two four or the three six, this shot goes more than it does. And just knocks out the five. Completing the spread eagle for two <laughs> balls. That one, that one hurts. Just going for pins here. And only gets two for a six box. Tough box for Mike, but you know, sometimes it's nice to get those frames out of the way early in a game. Plenty of time to recover. I once had a game that I started with a four frame that ended in the 160s, so I always like to think of that in those in these moments. Mike missing to the right, but gets a great break. Even just the one dead. I don't know if that wood's gonna help him though. Probably not, but you never know. As long as he catches it and sends it in the backwards direction, the wall can get involved and maybe. No, just gets the tag. Showing that the wood might have helped with the tag there if he got that. And misses to the right for a nine box. Both bowlers kind of cooling off to start game two here, but that's how it goes in ACST. Not every game is your best, but it's those games that you can grind out for, for victories and get those two points that it doesn't matter if you're above average or below average. It's all about what you can do in that one game against that opponent. All right, it's uh, another break there. This one looks like it's a better setup. Yeah, I like the way the wood's sitting for him there. As long as you get pretty much anywhere on that head pin except for maybe dead full. And unfortunately, uh, wow, oh. <laughs> I don't know how I only got one pin out of that, but that is what happened. Especially with ball flying around. <laughs> and gets a nine box. Uh, but it's only scored as an eight, so we're going to have to fix it. Oh. Uh, you you want me to get it? Yeah, sure. All right. You're closer. <laughs> Steve. Dual role here. Not only is doing play by play, but also some score correcting. Unbelievable Steve. job by Steve. <laughs> All right, Steve. <laughs> oh, sorry for banging the table. That was a nice one. <laughs> All right, dual role for our play by play guy here. Mike, right on the headpin oh. for the spread eagle. Maybe I'm bad luck. Both bowlers <laughs> just a little off the pockets that they were in game one so far. Okay, long way to go here. And only knocks out the 10. Mike's going to be down after half one, but trying to get whatever he can on this final ball here. And gets two for a seven box. All right, so through half one of game two, we have Matt DePiro, 45, and Mike Fabrizio Smith, 40. So far, Matt adding five pins to his already 17 pin lead and going to try to put as much up, much more up here as he can in game two. Matt just misses to the left of that pin. Up to the four horsemen plus the seven. Always nice to see that plank cover in the back pin in a situation like this. And oh, wow. Gets nothing, unfortunately. Apparently, Matt did not like that playing because he made sure to clear it out. Oh, Mike, watch his score. It's short enough right now. And gets an eight box. We'll see if it scores correctly. No, uh, we really got to watch this. Yeah, looks like lane two is having some issues with scoring. Also, hello, Tim. Tim Clark. Thanks for joining the broadcast. And back on the head pin and leaves the 789. He does have wood. Let's see where that other piece stops. Not a favorable lead, but you're right, Steve. I kind of. Wow. 
Some will cause it to steer. It all depends where that wood stops. So. <laughs> yeah. I almost think I would try to hit that hole between the seven pin wood and the other wood. I think I would play it the same way, Pete. But it's a real pinpoint shot. And unfortunately, it went too far left, it looks like. You really need a pinpoint on that one. And even with that, it still might not have went. Right on for the ten. That would have been, that was real pinpoint though. Matt doing a great job in these frames of grinding out nines and ten boxes though. And those can be big in matches like this. Right, Matt right on that pin again. It looks like he's going to get a break. Oh, will he get them all? Yes, oh. he will. <laughs> that looked like it might be ugly for a second. And all of a sudden, it's anything but. Now with a strike in frame eight, 63 through seven completed frames, so a good fill can get back over the 100 pace here. First ball of the fill. And right on the head pin again. And it's not the best leave. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah Wood took a sort of unfavorable turn, but if he could get up in the corner of that cat, he could still get some things moving back there. Trying to hit the wood. Oh, he does hit it. Oh, he does. Oh, wow. Nine is a great fill. Hey, you're going to have to fix this fill. For a nine box. It was a deserving nine fill though. He hit his object on both first balls, so he deserved what he got there. Giving him 91 through nine completed frames here. If I do some quick math, he needs nine for 100. That sounds about right. Yeah. If anybody wants to uh, double check us on that, we welcome it. And his next ball on the headpin again. And let's see where that wood stops. Ooh. Uh, oh. Not sure I love the coverage on that. Yeah. Nine pin in the back, but it could go. It's gonna need a little bit of movement back there. And plays it high and only. Oh, oh he gets a break. Oh, gets nice. the spare. That's the movement I was talking about, Steve. I knew it wasn't gonna go clean, but with the other piece of wood up there, I was wondering if something else would get moving like that did and take out the nine pin. He needed that though. Alright, here comes the fill. 101 plus whatever he gets on this. And misses the head pin. Looks like he dropped four. Nice finish there by Matt DePiro. Putting a lot of pressure on Mike here in half two. Mike's gonna need a 65 half here. And we are gonna move the camera in three, two, one. All right, we are back live here in Yarmouth, Massachusetts. All right, Mike starting box six. This is to the right of the head pin, but Matt. he's got a plank to help with that four horseman. Sorry, Steve. You're fine. Matt DePiro with a 105 in game two, giving him a 244 through two completed strings. And Mike, oh, he misses the head pin, but almost gets it. Yeah, that one was kind of ugly. Yeah. The four pin, all over it for the time. So Mike's going to need at least two marks here, both with very decent to high fills to have a chance in game two. But again, even if he does lose, he's just trying to accumulate as much as possible towards total pin fill. Alright. Ooh, it had him a skip blob there. Looks like he might have slipped out of his hand. <laughs> the four horsemen plus the seven. Unfortunately, misses left and gets nothing. Mike definitely wants to just find some count here. Maybe forget about the head pin and look for a you know nice eight or nine box. If it was me up there, I'd be telling myself to miss right, which he did, but only knocks out one. 
sometimes when you do that, we like to overcompensate and then go even further right than you realized. And at least you got one there, but you're probably not happy with that six box. Looking to bounce back with three boxes to go here. And right on the head pin, but leaves the cluster on the right. The diamond plus the ten. Well, some would say in this situation, at least they're all together. Misses and only gets the five nine. Makes the ten box. Great last shot. So with that ten, Mike goes the sixty six through eight. And the sneaky part of that ten box is he is not yet in double strike territory. He can still win this strike without the help of a double strike. If he got less than ten on that box, that was not no longer going to be the case. And right on the head pin, and oh. does the 189 again. Second time the string. Wow. Well, this time he, oh, that was a good effort, but just a little too far right. Yeah, if he caught that three pin, that one may have gotten interesting. And goes for the pins and gets nine. Smart play. Yes, so Mike does give himself the chance to tie the string with a triple strike because of that nine box. But he will need three strikes on these next three balls to do so. And he unfortunately misses to the left and hits the two pin. And with that, Matt DePiro wins game number two is up two strings to none early in this match. Great effort for the spare, but it looks like it was a little too full on the head pin and didn't send anything to the left. Mike Fabrizio Smith. It's a nine box to end at an 84. <laughs> and a 206 through two games. So he's still above his 100 pace, a few pins below his ACSC average of 108. Matt DePiro goes up two games to none, which means four points to none. And the home bowler, Mike, goes into game three down 38 total pins. For those of you who are audibly impaired, I guess you don't know that I said that. <laughs> but here's this box. And in the background, uh, first ball of box one. Leaves the one five ten. Interesting leave. Yeah, seriously, I don't like that five pin sitting back right there. Let me shoot that weird angle play he's got. He oh, just to the left of the head pin. as an employee will go down and clear the ball for Matt. I think he was actually more worried that the ball was going to trigger the, the, the camera for Matt's third ball, so he turned the camera off and made sure that didn't happen. Smart move. As sometimes in the fully automatic places, weird things like that can happen. Again, the human eye, much better at Candleton scoring than the computer eye. And this time he hits the head pin and only gets the 1-5. Clearly I'm not biased, right, Steve? Not at all. It's almost like you used to bowl in a place that had paper scoring. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Even my Union Street League up in, that I was in up through last year was still pencil and paper, so yeah, I'm definitely biased. And that on the head and leaves a spread eagle plus one in the back. However, I will say my favorite scoring is actually the compu score, where they just don't have the cameras and you just push the button. That's that's the best one. I agree with Pete's assessment of scoring. It's the best of both worlds. It takes out the computer error and it takes out the humans who don't don't do math that well. It takes out the right wing, leaving Very the left easy wing. Very correct. I swear, compu score has not paid me for this endorsement. <laughs> oh, gets the eight box. But I mean, it came out in like 95, so why don't, why can't we all just have it, you know? <laughs> it's gotta be cheap by this point, I think. Maybe some people don't want to sit there and score all game. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Webster Timber Lanes, uh, Lakeside Lanes, two places yep. that come right to mind that, that still utilize that scoring system. Lakeside Lanes is where I learned how to bowl. Yep, two fine establishments. 
please go out and support all your Candlepin bowling facilities. Oh, misses to the left and left the one seven eight ten. Be a hard shot to make. And only chops out the head pin for a seven box. Hey, hey Mike, Mike seven. <laughs> and once again. The scoring issues yeah. rear their ugly head as we talk about them. Yeah. So both bowlers struggling since they're hot game ones here, but Matt DePiro at least still winning the points and keeping the total lead going. So, you know, a little more comfortable position he's sitting in now. Mike Fabrizio Smith definitely hoping to make up some of these 38 pins before it's too late. Matt just catches the head pin and gets a great break. Wow. Left with him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Left with only hey, the three. This is a Ryan's amusements, so kind of. <laughs> Makes the nice. spare with a giant plank of wood. Yeah. You always want to make those. Not only is it nice when you break up what was almost a difficult split, it's also just it's double as beautiful when you get a nice plank to a couple planks he had there to shoot at. And you didn't get try to get too fancy with it, you just you know, took the spare where they gave it to him. And the full ball unfortunately misses to the right, but gets a great break and Nolan gets seven on the fill. Uh, tremendous wood behind that head in there. He doesn't even have to get that. You could also get this by being off to the right, spinning it. Oh, but you do have to hit it. Well, you gotta hit something. <laughs> Looking for the 10 box to end this half. And gets a 9. 50 now, for the half. The, the left side of that wood was the wrong side if, if you were gonna spin back the head pin, but he does still get that out of it. 50 half from Matt DePiro. You're going to move the camera in three, two, one. And Mike's first ball, he hits the three pin, takes out just the right side. On the head pin, great attempt, but leaves the five seven. That leaves tricky, Steve. Sometimes it goes, and then sometimes you really think you hit it, and it's going to go, and then you sweep the 5-7 it's all like that. And gets a 9 box. I never know what to make of that one when I throw my ball at it. Sometimes it just goes unexpectedly, and other times, as we saw, not so much. I mean, you do need a lot to happen. You need the 5 pin to go in the back with nothing, else, nothing left on the right side to deflect it to it. So I guess I understand. Mike just misses the head pin, but what a break. Leaves only the head pin. <laughs> Steve, I think if he hits the head pin on the second ball, the shot should go. I, I agree, Pete. And all over it to the spare. Not to pat myself on the back or anything, Steve, but that's why I'm here. Just like I said, he hit the head pin and the shot did indeed go. I don't know what we do without your analysis, Pete. Yep, I agree. Humbly, thank you. You're welcome. And here comes the fill. Oh. And just takes out the head pin and the 7, 8, and the 5. Sometimes candle pin is just not fair. You, you make a nice spare, you hit the head pin. It's not going to be All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Four, we'll, we'll yeah. fix it. Hold on. Let's finish the box and we'll fix it. Let's finish the box. Yeah. Yeah. Four fill, like, ten box. Yeah. We just got it. It didn't register the first ball. All right, so Fabrizio Smith getting a four fill, a head pin four fill. Really tough break there. But he does work it out for a very nice ten box there. And after Steve corrects the score here, I will be able to tell you that Mike Fabrizio Smith now is 33 through three boxes. So he is up nine on Matt through three completed frames. However, he's now going up against Matt's spare seven box. So Mike is about on pace to tie um, 
first half here with a nine box and an eight box, but obviously he's going to try to throw another mark or two up and see if he can start chipping into that 38 pin. Oh, right on the head pin and drops everything but the five. I do not oh. like that wood. Yes, the horrible angle on that wood. He's, he's going to need some luck here. I almost think about throwing it way left. I think I would do the same, actually. And it looks like he was listening. Oh. And he gets the spare. Great read. Great ball by Mike Fabrizio oh. Smith. Oh. That's why he's the <laughs> That's why he's the number one seed, folks. Well, that's not why, but you know, it's part of the reason. The other reason is he's won a lot more games than he's lost, honestly. That is how you usually get first place, by winning more than you lose. Way more. This is, I don't have his record in front of me, but it's like 114 and 30 something. He's, he's in the one seed by a lot right now. That was big, Steve. He should win this first half, and he can start chipping into that 38-pin total, but before he starts worrying about total, he does at least want to win a string at some point here. So. Yeah, right on the head, been great, Phil. Oh. Drops nine, leaving only the four pin. 19 boxes definitely help in the quest to win games. Back-to-back -back spares, and just misses. Steve, I think I saw that pin wiggle a little. I think the air from that ball touched it. And a nine box to have a half of 61. Still a solid, even though you'd like that second ball back, still a solid first half by Mike. He's up at the half, 61 to 50, plus 11 on the game. And cutting that match deficit currently down to 27 through 25 completed. We are halfway through this match, Steve. Unbelievable. I mean, I believe it. That's how matches work, Pete. I guess so. <laughs> just, wow. Matt just misses to the left. Leaves the four horsemen plus the eight. And misses to the right this time, but drops nine and just leaves the headband. And you know, I think if he hits the headband, this is going to go beat. I agree. <laughs> Boxes like this is what I like to call surrounding the headband, where he goes wide left on ball one, wide right on ball two, and leaves only the headband, but unfortunately the headband wins this there. time. <laughs> <laughs> the headband won that battle, but from watching Matt through 26 frames, I would not be surprised at all if he comes back and buries the next one. Misses to the left. So takes out the 248. I hate when I'm looking at this one, Steve. I, I do not envy Matt right now. <laughs> oh, nice second ball. And that, what an attempt. Relieves the 510. Yeah, great second ball to get right in the one three pocket there and make sure he's at least going to get a decent frame out of it. And who gets oh, the 10? What a shot. Tremendous 10. And like I talked about earlier sometimes, these are the balls that can win matches right here. He can get an 8 box right there, but he makes a tremendous split for a 10. And he wins this match by 1. Remember that ball? And back up. Oh, this is to the right. I thought that was going to hook in, and it didn't. Four horsemen plus the 9. Future ACST prospect Karen Urshatelli tuning into the broadcast. Hello. And just gets the 9 10 on ball two. Which... And oh, six box. He's got to be disappointed there. Hey, Mike, make sure it gives him six. Yeah. Not <laughs> All right, so uh, Matt DePiro, 75 through eight completed frames here. Definitely hoping to get a mark or two to kind of stabilize himself. As, since he's 139, frankly, it just hasn't quite popped the same for him. And right on the head, been great shot and a strike. Oh, there it is, Steve. That's exactly what Matt had in mind for that ball. I mean, I think you try to throw one of those every ball at him. <laughs> but... In the history of can up in bowling, it's never been done, so I guess sometimes you need to be realistic and just be with the 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think we're back, though. I think we're back. Yep. Excuse All right. our technical difficulties. Looks like the Wi-Fi dropped for a minute there. Uh, we should probably slide to the right again. Well, we're going to slide to the right, guys. Close your eyes. Separate from Mike Capizio Smith, but leaves the half Worcester on the right. Oh, wow, we only managed to lose a viewer or two through that. That's good. Uh, for those of you who didn't see it, Matt finished with a 97. Yep, thank you for that, Steve. Okay, that gives Matt a robust 341 through three completed strings. So, Mike Fabrizio Smith looking good to win game uh, three here, but it's not a guarantee yet. This is to the right, and. If he was to come up with like a four box or five box, or, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. He's actually well above the 100 pace right now, so it should be okay. Oh, just kept sliding to the right there and only knocked out the nine. That being said, if he was to get a five here and maybe another low frame, then it's not completely over yet. Great last ball to get the nine. You get as many pins as you can in that situation. Yeah, tremendous ball there by Mike to make sure that this game doesn't get closer than it should. Giving him 79 through seven completed and a six pin lead through. No. And right on the head pin. And looks like it might catch a break there. And he leaves the two, four, seven. Right on it, but does not take the seven. And I had misspoke just a second ago, so Fabrizio Smith up 10 through seven completed frames. And gets a nine box. He does gain three in the eighth box there, giving him a 13 pin lead for eight completed. However, he is going up against uh, Matt Strike. Also, however, Mike only needing a total of 10 more pins to win game three with two boxes to go. Mike unfortunately misses to the left, but gets a little bit of a break. Here's one you don't see every day, huh, Steve? No. Especially with the five pin. One back there. One, five, three, six, seven. Wow. And still gets the five. All right, now he needs to just knock out the one, five for the ten. That's one of the peskier five pins I've seen in a while. For both, neither one of those balls taking out the five. And just gets out the head pin. Getting a nine box. The king was well protected on that frame. So he only needs one pin to win this match. It seems like very likely he's going to win the match. Throw two in the gutter to make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and right on the head pin, and it will not be an interesting finish. Right. Mike apparently does not care for drama. Closes out game three on the first ball of the tenth frame. Left for the three seven. Tough leave, but if he could make it, this would help. Oh, what a oh, shot! Oh, I, I mean, oh. if the pin didn't take it, I think the ball was going to. Wow, yeah, Steve. <laughs> tremendous shot by Mike to not only win the game, but also chip a little bit into his 38 pin deficit. So these are the balls, like I keep reiterating. These are the, the balls that win and lose ACST matches right here. And right on the head pin, and oh. does what he's been doing well, a little too much of today. Good spot to leave that one, and it's three more, you know? So at least he doesn't have to, to shoot at that box. It's all yeah. over. 110 for Mike Fabrizio Smith in game three, giving him his first two points of the match, and a 316 through three completed games. And he cuts his deficit down to 25 pins. And for those of you audibly impaired, We are through three games out of five. Matt DePiro is up two games to one, which means he's up four points to two. And if total were to end now, Matt DePiro would win that by 25. But if this is the ACST, and we have two games to go, folks. And buckle Matt, in. Right on the head pin, but leaves the 9 6 10 7. Wow. Matt's starting to realize that that 139 average may not have been as realistic as he had hoped. Oh, what an attempt, but probably needed to be on the right side of that six pin. 
these are the if he picks this up, Steve, these are the ten boxes that make champions right here. And it looks like he will pick it up and gets the ten. Yep. A line I coined years ago is tens win titles. Matt DePiro is showing that right there. Tremendous first ball, horrible break, but he just sat in there patiently and threw a tremendous second ball, tremendous third ball, and grinded it up for a ten. Looks like he'll be back on the headpin again, but oh, not a great leave. Apparently, the, both these bowlers using up a lot of the breaks early and starting to look like. And he will hit the three pin, and he is nice effort, but leaves two. Steve, that's five objects in a row for Matt in game four here. And plays that wood. Oh, and gets oh, a great oh, 10 box. Ten. Perfect game, still intact. Yeah, and that's six for six on his object here. Matt DePiro showing that he is going to try to not let Fabrizio Smith keep cutting into that 25 pin deficit. Matt back on the head pin again, leaves the 5 10. We did see him make this in the last game, so we do know it can go. And he is on the right side, unfortunately. He had to be on the left. Wanted to get that right in the pocket of the pin in the wood. But I'm calling that an object. That's eight for eight on the object. And he will get the... Oh, I thought he had that, and it just missed. Finally misses a pin in game four. Yeah. Still, though, for the, the leaves he's been having, 29 after three boxes is not a bad start right here. Right, and just knocks out the 3 5 9. It does also end his streak of three head pins in a row to start game four there. He does, however, keep a streak of leaving a split intact, oh. which I'm sure he's not happy about. With the spread eagle, minus one. So he's going to hit the object pin and only get two out of it. Or seven box. Hero is 10 for 12 on object pins this half, but unfortunately the score is not reflected much as he's sitting at 36 through 4 completed. And right on the head pin oh. again in a strike. Finally a reward for the consistent ball. Great Hammer ball to sit on. Five. Yeah, I agree. We're going to move in three, two, one. <laughs> That's Candleton check contributor Bobby Beer with the sound effects. Yep. Right. Hey, feel free to somebody feel free to check this too. I haven't. And maybe like Mike just out punches out the one five. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to make sure I yep. messed up the score. Oh wait, wait. Okay. You just check these. Alright. Sure. And Mike. Is that the one five, Steve? It was the one five, Pete. You missed it while you were checking the scores. Unbelievable. Worst leave in Keanu Pen, in my opinion. The one foul. And, ooh, starts with a six box. Gotta be disappointed with that. Yeah, especially when you hit the head count on the first ball. I mean, he did come up with blank on that thing. So we confirmed the scores. This match is indeed 341 to 316 through three completed frames. Misses to the right this time, but it's going to get a break and just leave the four horsemen minus the seven. Steve, I was just going to mention before I distracted myself that uh, that strike by DePiro is huge because as an ACST competitor myself, I know that it makes a tremendous difference when I know my opponent is sitting on a strike compared to an open box in that fifth frame. Absolutely. That puts some pressure on the bowler that goes up next and might respond to that pressure with a spare. Strap in, folks. I feel I have the feeling we're in for a good deal in here. Comes the fill ball and misses to the right and fills it with a five. Leaves the four horsemen plus the nine. And 
just misses to the left, but drops nine and leaves the headband. Sometimes I tell myself in this situation, Peter, that's the only one you're supposed to have. <laughs> Sometimes it eludes you. Us. And he gets the 10 box. Let's see if the scoring is accurate. Yep. Yeah. That gives us Fabrizio Smith 31 through three completed and a two pin lead through three completed for a string four. Hero is sitting on a seven box and a strike for the fourth and fifth box. And right on the head bin, but leaves the six, ten, seven. He does have wood, but I don't know how good it is. Yeah, he's going to need a lucky bounce here. It, it doesn't look like it's going to go easily. However, you do see these ones, you know, if he can get something moving side to side, I think he's got a chance. And hits the edge. Oh, almost sends that pin all the way over, yeah, but leaves almost. a seven. Did get something moving towards that left side, but unfortunately too far back in the pit. All over the seven for the ten box. Nice ten. I think he'd like to sit with a mark here so he matches opponent. Yeah, that's right. He does have a five pin lead, so if he gets a ten box here, he technically is leading the half. However, DePiro is sitting on two fill balls, so anything over five on those two balls would give DePiro the first half uh, lead. And right on the head pin, oh. but leaves the 3 6 4. Yeah, so make a believe, but you know, essentially Fabrizio Smith just wants to stay on his objects and you know, hope for the best here. And oh, just misses a little to the right and chops out the 6. From my angle, he looked like he might just barely clip that 3, but a little thin. Completely to the right and gets an eight box, sitting on a 49 half. Yep, so DePiro coming up with 46 plus two balls. So, barring a couple half lister balls in a row here, he should have a lead going into half two. I'm trying to increase his 25 pin match lead that he currently has through three completed strings. First ball of the second half is going to miss a little to the left, but gets a great break. Oh, yeah. And it it's going to get better. Oh. Just left with the one nine. It, well, he's on a strike. He's it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Just hit the head pin here. Yep. And oh! oh wow. Only gets a nine fill. And really good second ball. I really thought DePero was looking at a spare there, but the nine pin said not this time. Luck with the nine, he's going to play the wood to the right and get the ten. Smart play. On a side note, if you did not know the nine pin could talk, now you do. Alright, and gets the head pin. It looked like it was going to drift, but it stayed right in there. Yeah, a little thin, but he did catch the, catch the head pin and get a good, uh, some movement off the wall. Played it there, but it did go, so it doesn't matter. I was a little worried about <laughs> him being a little low like that, but it was a very good angle to just drive straight back. So, DePiro with a big spare in frame seven. And again, DePiro's made at least one pin on every ball except the one this string. And misses to the left, and the fill is only a uh, four. But he's still adding to his total, it puts him at 79 through seven. He's adding some pressure to Fabrizio Smith here who, getting late in this match, definitely wants to start making some of, up some of these bins soon. This is to the right, and it's left with the one four seven. And looks like he's going for all of them, and he gets all of them. Nice third ball there. He had a little extra protection to give himself some confidence to go for the hitman there, because he could have still missed and easily got the nine without having the eight key corner bins there. And right on the head pin. And we saw this lead for Mike Fabrizio Smith earlier, and it did not go. We'll see if it can go for Matt. Yeah, tough break not carrying that seven here. Couple pieces of wood though, same thing. If you can just get something moving over towards that side. Just chops out the 6'10. 
Not too unexpected, in my opinion. Yeah, he probably had to catch the end of that front piece that you still see lying there to even have a chance. Even that probably wouldn't have been about it, though. Yeah, just misses the seventh pin for a nine box. 98 through nine, the hero going to be in the hundreds here, hoping for a mark to get up into the 110s. If you can get another mark here, it's going to force Fabrizio Smith to get at least two marks for decent fills in his second half. First ball of the 10th box, right on the head pin, and just chops out the 159. Wow, since that first strike where both these bowlers came out hot, we've seen a lot of these, I feel like. Next ball, just hit the object pin, but only gets two. Last ball, knocks out the 6-10 for a seven box to finish with a 105. Yep, that's 105 is confirmed, giving Matt DePiro a 446 through four completed strings putting Mike Fabrizio Smith in a situation where, where we need to move the camera on three, two, one. Mike with a great first ball, but he leaves the 4-10. He does have wood that could help. I don't see anything that's going to get over to that 10 No. Yep, that's well. basically, I really saw no angle for him there. But he at least got something moving in that direction, which was good. I think if he had played it on the red line, the ball might have shot over. That was my thought. Maybe. At least. All right, so that gives Fabrizio Smith 59 through six frames. He is going to need 46 more to at least tie strength four. Bless you. That was me with the sneeze. I apologize. Um, Fabrizio Smith will need at least two marks with high fills. And it's the two pin and leaves the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which I don't think I've ever seen before. Three pin in the back row. <laughs> this could go if he could get that front wood spinning. Oh yeah, both. Oh, wow, it just went over everything there. I think I liked it on the other side of the right. Yeah, you, you were right. That was the three pin. Yeah. I miscalled it. Even that, uh, I still think he may not have got it. I think I'd play the wood here for the ten, honestly. I agree. I think I would as well. It looks like Mike agrees with us, but he misses to the left. So Fabrizio Smith, however, has, through seven completed frames, has five splits off the head pin this game. So he's just going to have to do his best to keep working through that, and hopefully one of these breaks up for a spare leave soon. And misses to the left of the head pin, but it looks like he's got a little bit of a break. The funny thing here is this may be more makeable than a lot of his head pin hits have been this year. Ball is oh, misses to the right, only kicks out the three. All right, so starting to become crunch time here for Mike Fabrizio Smith. And he does hit the headband and gets a nine box. Matt DePiro leading game four by 13 through eight completed frames. Fabrizio Smith needing 30 pins in the last two frames here. He does not win this game. He is going to be looking at somewhere around a 25 to 30 pin deficit. And he is on the head pin, but leaves the six, seven. And correction, he's going to be looking more at about a 35 to 40 pin deficit if he doesn't get any more marks here. And yeah, this would be a tremendous spare if he could send that, that six pin over. And he just knocks it to the right and yeah. needed to be on the right side of that to send it all the way left. Yeah, another horrible leave there for, for Mike off a great first ball. No luck at all. I know those of you at home can't see this, but Mike has one, two, three, four, five splits so far. I'm counting six up there. Six, six, yeah, you're right, I, mi I missed one, yeah. yep. Wow, he still has a chance for one more here. Let's <laughs> see if he can make it seven. These games can be very frustrating, especially in a head-to-head -head format. And oh, and he does! Ugh, another split. Wow, seven splits in game four. I mean, DePiro had to battle through five splits himself. Oh, what an attempt. Wow. Just misses. So the two competitors combined for 12 splits in the 20 boxes of this game. And misses to the left for a nine box and ends with a 95, losing this game by yeah. 10 pins. No luck, no luck, Mike. All right, so... 
Gero winning his third game out of four attempts, giving him a 446 through four completed. Mike Fabrizio Smith with a 95 that he deserved much better, folks. I mean, seven head pin splits. Not much he could do with those, but nonetheless, 95, give me a 411. And if Mike Fabrizio Smith wants to win total, he will need to win this game by at least 36 pins. That's first ball of the last game, leaves the four horsemen right. Knocks it straight back. I hate that one. Those ones you can kind of see coming when you're up there, though, because there's nothing behind it, and you can kind of see the balls carrying full. And gets the nine box to start game five. I think a lot of us just hope because we hit the head pin, we deserve to make it, but sometimes we kind of know, like, oh, yeah, that one's just going to chop probably. We don't like to admit it, but it's, it's true. Camp and bowling, small ball, skinny pins. Second ball is going to be right on that head pin. Oh. oh, let's see if he's going to get a break. No. That seven pin stood solid. Wanted to go. Four seven ten. Both bowlers having a tremendously hard time getting spare leaves since that first game. And he does oh. send it over and makes the shot. What a shot! <laughs> what a shot by Matt DePiro. Making the 4 7 clean and sending the 4 7 right over the piece of wood into the 10 pit. Highlight real shot there. And the fill unfortunately drifts left and he only gets a 3. Knocks out the 4 7 8. Hey, you know what? Games that can be decided by, by 3 pins or less, that's still a big 3 pins there that you would not have without that tremendous spare. Right back on the head pin though, but is left with the 2-9 it looks like. And right on it from its head. Great shot. 32 through 3 for Matt. Also, even in a match where you're just trying to make sure you don't lose a 35 pin lead in one game, even a 3 fill is something over like a 9 box. That's a 4 pin swing. Box four, gets the head pin a little light it looked like. Keeps the spread eagle on the left plus the one in the back and the ten. He does have that wood though. I know very few people will understand this reference, but very close to our first Don Hoskin game of the match. Five pin down. And, oh, oh, is he gonna Steal get it? it? Steal it? Oh, it's wiggling. But no, it is gonna fight for its life. Well, the two pin says, nope, you're gonna have to earn him in game five. And gets the 10 box. That must be the same pin that was the 9 pin earlier that <laughs> said something that I forget what it said. But. <laughs> 42 through 4. And here comes the first ball of box 5. And right back on the head pin it looks like. And just leaves the 7. sitting in a place he probably doesn't love. He's, he's got a couple different potential reads here. He's probably going to go right towards the pin and hope that the cap doesn't screw up. Looks like oh. he's going to... Uh, oh. I think he'd be more right if he was trying to play that wooden yeah. bounce the ball left. I agree, Steve. He still might not have worked there, but I see what the thought process might have been. And, of course, the last ball is right on it, and he gets the 10. Yeah. <laughs> Converse the 10, no problem. But, hey, so that's one more for the good for, for Matt. Giving him a 52, we're going to move the camera in 3, 2, 1. All right, Mike starting off game five. Let's see what the first ball is. DePiro with a solid 52 half to at least uh, put, you know, give us his 35 pin total lead a little protection there. Mike leaves the 1, 3, 6 after his first ball. Last thing you want to do in the Bureau situation is come out with like a 40, low 40s half right there. Mike. Oh, he gets oh. it on the outside. Little. Usually you see that on the inside. Yeah, really light on the end in there, but nice friendly wall action there. Matches the spare. 
Just chops oh. out the head pin. Wow. Even the half whistler on the left and the 9 pad. That I'd... ball must have been as full as full gets right there. And he gets a 9 out of that. What a great shot. That's a solid 9 out of that. Giving, so Mike neutralizes Matt's early mark and his only mark for that half. So for two boxes, Mike has a 2 pin lead, 24 to 22. Long way to go here. And right on the headman for a strike. What a great ball. Yeah, hammer right on time for Fabrizio Smith. If he's ever going to have a chance at winning this game by 35 pins, it needs to start now. And that is definitely the start he was looking for. He does have a chance to cut into it in these next two frames as the bureau was open in boxes three through five. The fill and this is a bit to the right and is left with the one two five eight nine. That piece of wood in the middle will help though, I feel if it if it's hit that it'll help kinda get the action going and keep the links together a little. And he will he get it? It's wiggling. I do not think it will go. Not helpful enough though. Still a big nine fill there by right? Left with a nine box. The ball almost wanted to take that out, but just slid right by. All right, so Fabrizio Smith does have a 10 pin lead through four completed frames, 52 to 42. The Puro sitting on a 10 box in frame five, so Mike at least trying to keep pace or possibly put a mark up there to be able to cut you know, more into that 35 pin deficit. Right now, through 44 completed frames, Matt DePiro has a 25-pin lead on this match. And he is also up three games to one. Mike's first ball. Gets the head pin and gets a lucky break there to just lead the 10. He's got a bunch of wood around it. I think he should be all right as long as he's at least, you know, in that vicinity. Should be fine. And, oh, he hits the front wood and the ball goes behind. Yeah, he really wanted to get on those two straight pieces there and just drive it all straight back. And misses, gets the nine box, and finishes with a 61 half. All right, so he does chop nine pins off of his 35 pin deficit, but with only five boxes to go, probably wanted a little more there. However, Every game and every point matters in ACST, so he at least gives himself a nine-pin lead going into the final half of the match. Nine-pin lead for Fabrizio Smith on the game and 26-pin lead for Capiro on the match. And as we know, the match is worth four points compared to the string, which is worth two. Matt, right on the head pin and leaves the spread eagle minus the 10. Gotta be the announcers. I, I, I agree. <laughs> Takes out the left wing and is left with the 3 6. It might be smart for us to go and start looking around for agents after we leave here today. And gets the 10 box. Nice shot. Good 10 by Matt there, guarding that almost 30 pin lead. Every pin does matter here, especially as many people know Mike Fabrizio Smith can throw marks in a hurry. He's got that very explosive first ball, as many people have witnessed. Matt just misses to the left, but I think he's got a great break here. Very nice. Left with the 1 3 for the spare. This would be big for the hero to at least you know, help his quest to put away total a little bit. And it looks like he's going to be. Oh, just chops it out that head pin. And will end 
with a nine box. He has 71 through seven. Yep, so right now, Fabrizio Smith still looking good for game five, unless DePiro can put up a mark or two here. However, uh, DePiro trying to do his best to put as much distance between him and Smith for total as he can. And misses to the left and leaves the four horsemen right. Right on the head pin, but maybe slightly too full. A little full there, yep. Left with a giant plank for a 10 box, though. And looks like he will get the 10. 81 through 8. DePiro, first ever appearance in this alley here at Yarmouth, and very respectable. Uh, looking to be at least 445 here. And uh, with another mark or two, still has a chance at 450, 460, which great, I mean, five, sorry, 550, 560. No, no, what's better than that? On the head pin, left, leaves the half to right plus the 10. You know, this is actually an easier shot, the fact that he has the 10 back there with some wood. If he can just be on that object on either side, he'll give it a chance. And he is on the object and only gets the 310. Ideally, you probably want to be on the left side of the three there, so the, the free pin has a chance to do some more damage in the back, but he did at least give it a good chance. And another 10 box, 91 through 9. All right, so uh, DePiro pinning extremely well this half. I believe, yeah, he's only left one pin up in these last four frames, which even though he hasn't been able to get a mark, those are all valuable pins right now. And misses. Wide left there, similar to a Buffalo kicker. Even as we know, one, yeah. <laughs> one good ball does take this lead. But don't worry, Kansas City's gonna get their comeuppance today. Mark my words. It's on tape. And right on the headman, will he get the spare? No, oh. it wiggles but does not go down. Six pin, like Billy McGinnis, the 2001 AFC Championship game said, not tonight. <laughs> and nine box for an even 100. So DePiro finishes up with his first experience in Yarmouth with a 546 series today, which would be a 109.2 average. That's a pretty good average. I'd take it. Absolutely. He came out first for his best game of 139, and, you know, it was a bit more of a struggle from there, but we're moving the camera. Mike with a great first ball. Just leaves the floor pin. Looks like he will convert that nine drop and yes. gets the spare. Yes, he does, and that's big. So Fabrizio Smith looking pretty good in game five here. It's going to take a disaster for him to lose. However, if he can, he would like to win this. He would like to bowl at 135 this string and possibly tie or win total. And only takes out the half Worcester right for a two, Phil. Yeah, and that's going to really bring down the chance of Steve. Giving him 73 through 6. He is on about a 110 pace right now. But oh, I thought that was going to be a full Worcester for a second, and he lucked out and left with the 1610. Yeah, and regardless of what happens here, I think he's going to need to get marks in all his remaining boxes to have a chance for total. And he gets a 9 box, has 82 through 7. If he doesn't mark in the 8th, I believe he's in double to triple strike territory. Uh, yep. needs to mark out or double at this point. You know he can. Yeah, and that's the problem, yeah. <laughs> and on the head pin, and oh. mixes a lot, but left with the three, five, nine, ten. Yeah, tough leaf here, especially with that nine pin in the back. No wood to really help. And right on, whoa, oh, just chops out the three. Sometimes candle pin just says, you know what? I'm not your friend today. And that was the, the example on that ball. And only gets an eight box out of that. Three solid balls there, Steve. And that's yep. Fabrizio Smith deserving more than an eight. And, but honestly, that's kind of been the theme of his last couple of games. The, the home breaks have not been going his way today. So DePiro looking really good to bring home total here. And on the headband leaps the 285. 
In fact, Steve, if, if Fabrizio Smith does not make the spare, the hero does win the match 12 to 2. And right on it Whoa! makes the spare. Keeping total alive, however, Fabrizio Smith does need a strike on the next two balls to still have a chance. He has won game five, so I lied. It's not going to be 12 to 2, it's going to be 10 to 4. And right in the pocket, and he needs a strike. And they're still falling, but oh, he only gets so a nine close, fill. So it's, close. Is he on a fill? Uh, strike fill. Or it, we'll fix it. Okay. And he gets the spare. Uh, hey, um, yeah, okay, Steve's got it. All right, so Mike Smith does make the spare. He makes it close. However, I believe even a strike on this ball, and I believe DePiro wins total by five or six pins. Six pins, yep. So the best Mike can do here is lose by six. DePiro wins the match 10 to four. This is to the right and leaps four horsemen left, but he doesn't have to shoot at this time. Solid finish by Fabrizio Smith, 125, giving him a grand total of 536. And the win in game five. However, Matt DePiro walks into Yarmouth for his first ever appearance, faces the number one seed Mike Fabrizio Smith and the defending Southern Conference champion, and he wins today 10 points to four. Unbelievable match. Only 10 pins separating them in the end. Yeah, Steve, what a match we got to call today. Solid match by two bowlers who are both looking to be in the playoffs right now. Fabrizio Smith looking to win his division and Matt DePiro comfortably sitting in a playoff spot, especially after today's 10-4 win over the number one seed. We thank you all for tuning in to today's version of Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. On behalf of Stephen Dignam, I'm Peter Ischitelli. Any closing thoughts today, Steve? Everybody have a great Sunday. Enjoy the football games. Go Baltimore. I may or may not have a vested interest. And we'll see you next time on Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour.